Hello again, guys. Uh, today, what I want to talk about very shortly is going to be a process called diffraction. Diffraction. So, uh, put that up so it's not quite so dark. Um, so, what I want to do is we're going to go over to my overhead and I'm just going to write down a few things while we talk about this process of waves. Now, when we talk about diffraction, um, diffraction occurs with every kind of wave. Kind of get this in here and refocus. And I'll throw some light down on it too. So diffraction is going to occur when in any kind of wave. So this could happen in sound waves, this can happen in light waves, can happen in water waves. And it's a different phenomenon from reflection, which basically when we look at reflection, all reflection, based, the rules for reflection basically say is that if a wave comes in at a certain angle, so I'll just call that theta, let's say, that if I draw a line that's kind of perpendicular, it comes straight out of a mirror, that that wave will reflect on the opposite side of that middle line. And what we'll call this is also theta. So it just says whatever angle you come in at, you're going to leave at the same angle. Okay, that's reflection. We also have talked about refraction, which basically says that if you have a light wave that is approaching, so I'll say that these are wave fronts or crests. So as these crests approach a new medium, and especially when that medium has a different speed of light, which glass would, um, light is ten, tends to be slower in glass, that you're gonna see some bending of the light that will occur as the light enters this new slower media. And so what actually ends up happening is those light waves will bend, was coming in like this, now it's moving more like that. So that light will bend when it enters a new medium that is slower. So that's reflection and refraction. Diffraction is something different. Um, I can illustrate diffraction with a diagram pretty easily. Let's say that I have an incoming wave. Incoming wave that has a particular wavelength. And so it's coming in and the waves are about this far apart. You can envision each one of these, these are called wave fronts, but each one of these waves that I'm drawing here has the same wavelength. Now, when it approaches a gap, so there's some kind of a gap or an opening that the wave can pass through, you're gonna see diffraction when, as it goes through, it kind of, bends. So this wave, as it goes through, it's going to kind of have a bending shape like so. Okay, you're going to get something that kind of looks like this, where as it, it goes into this new space, it kind of spreads out a little bit. Okay, so this spreading that you see after it passes through an opening is what diffraction is. So I'll just very quickly define this. And I would say this is the spreading I'll say the spreading out of a wave when it passes through an opening. Okay, so you will see this phenomenon, this the spreading out that occurs when you pass through an opening in a lot of examples when you're close to the ocean. So for instance, if I, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I'll show you guys a picture of some diffraction that's occurring at the ocean. And so you can kind of see what happens. You can just make out this wave, the crest of this wave. Here's the crest of the one that was in front of it. 
another crest of one that was in front of that. And as it passed, this isn't quite an opening. I guess you could call it half an opening. So you get this spreading out that occurs as this wave passes, looks like a bunch of rocks or something here, that it curves, that wave will curve. That's diffraction right there. Now, why would somebody go and put this nice straight line of rocks right here? This is not natural. This is a breakwater. Um, the people that lived in these homes wanted to protect their beach from like high surf waves, uh, maybe storm waves at certain times of the year. So they put this to kind of absorb some of that energy. Remember, that's what waves do. They move energy from one place to another. And so they wanted to absorb some of that energy out here on these rocks instead of having it pound away at their beach over here. So they put up this line of rocks to protect the beach. That causes some diffraction. Now, one way to think about this is while this, these waves are spreading out, that also means the energy that they are carrying are also spreading out. So you get all of the energy that's contained in just this little bit of the wave that's close to the rocks here gets spread out throughout this space. That means that space does not experience as much energy. That means any sand that happens to be moving down the shoreline here, it doesn't have much energy to really keep it like mixed up with the water and moving. And this happens in Southern California. In fact, is I think this picture may be Southern California, but I don't remember where exactly it came from. Um, but it would look just like one um, that's here in Southern California. And as that sand moves into this space, instead of continuing down the shoreline, the lack of energy that's here just lets that sand drop. So the sand just drops right there. And it means that that sand doesn't get cleared out. And eventually what you get is this big bunch of sand that you see that's right here. This is not natural. This would not have been here if not for this nice straight line of rocks. That line of rocks protected the sand that was here, kept it from being washed away. And now you got what's called a trombolo is what it's called, or tombolo, I think is what it was. Um, so this sand is stuck here. And all that area that used to be an area where you could swim that didn't have much, much waves in it, or even kind of like a anchor your boat right here and protect it from the big waves, no longer can you do that because the unintended consequence, when man tries to mess with what nature does, there's always consequences. And in this case, the whole area filled up with sand because there was no wave energy to move it away. Okay, so that again is an example of diffraction and some of the consequences that come with diffraction. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the share on that. We'll go back to our diagram. And so I wanna show you a couple of different scenarios that could play out in terms, because what you'll find is the wavelength has a lot to do, the wavelength of the wave has a lot to do with whether or not you're gonna see significant um, diffraction. So the first scenario that I wanna lay out for you guys is where the wavelength, okay? The wavelength is, very good wavelength symbol, but this, I'll just label this wavelength. Okay, where the wavelength is much smaller, okay, the wavelength is much smaller than the gap that it moves through. So I'll just say then the opening. Okay, oops. And so let me just kind of draw out that scenario and see what you would typically see. If the wavelength is much smaller, what I would say is I'd have an opening here where the opening is bigger than the wavelength, okay? So let's just say this is some kind of barrier, like a wall or something like that. And here comes your wavelength where the wavelength here is gonna be much smaller then the opening, try to keep these nice and even. When it passes through, when there's not, when, when the wavelength is smaller, so again, you, just to reiterate, be sure you guys remember what this is. 
the wavelength is that distance, okay? That distance between one wave and the next wave. So when that's smaller than the opening is, what happens here is you really don't get much in the way of diffraction. You don't, you don't really get a whole lot. The waves just keep coming in. They don't really curve very much like these guys did here. Okay, so what I would say here is not much diffraction. Okay, when this is true. So when the wavelength is wavelength is smaller than the opening, not much diffraction. Now, the next scenario I would say is we're going to say the wavelength now is just about equal to the opening. OK, so that's our next scenario where the wavelength and the opening are just about the same. So I'm going to have another opening down here. There's our wall. OK, you guys can't see. Um, and then here come our waves. So here our opening is just about the same size as our wavelength is. And what should happen here is you're going to get a fairly significant amount of diffraction. OK, and if your purpose, like I showed you guys before, If your purpose, like I was showing you with the picture, is to reduce the amount of energy that enters this space to, to keep the waves as low as possible, I want diffraction. Diffraction is going to mean that, that the only energy that enters in, let's say this is a harbor, the only energy that enters into the harbor comes through this opening. And that means there wasn't a ton of energy with each wave that came in. And then it got spread way out. So that diffraction serves the purpose of spreading out that energy, which means it's, it's going to get even lower. So the waves that you see, if you go, for instance, to San Diego Bay, the waves you see in there are much, much smaller than the waves you'll see out on the beach at Pacific Beach or Mission Beach um, that front right on the water. OK, so because the opening to San Diego Bay is relatively small and closer in size to the wavelength of the waves that come in, you get a lot of diffraction in that space. So we had one example where the wavelength was smaller than the opening, another where the wavelength is about the same size as the opening, and the last one I'll talk about here is going to be a situation where that opening and the wavelength, the wavelength is actually bigger than the opening. So here's my opening. And let's say the waves are really far apart. OK, when they come through, you're going to also get very significant diffraction. So basically what I'm saying is you're going to get diffraction anytime that the waves are the same size as the opening or the waves are bigger than the opening. Anytime that you see one of these two things being true, you're going to get lots of diffraction. So if someday you're a civil engineer and you're designing the opening to a harbor, make sure that that opening to the harbor is at least the same size 
no smaller um, than the, actually it would be no bigger than the, um, the normal wavelength of the waves coming in. Because you want diffraction that kind, of, that kind of dilutes the energy, it moves the energy around a little bit, okay? Um, another example of where you're gonna see these is I want you guys to think about, let's kind of go to that example in a minute, but I want you to think about like an open door. Like, let's just say that you're in a dark room and I'll just kind of draw a door that's here. And the room that you're in is dark, but there's a door that's open and you have this, this shaft of light, basically, that goes into your room. Sorry, but I'm a lefty. So to make this dark, I'm gonna to have to move this to the side a little bit. So what you're gonna basically see is that all of this is dark. Okay, all of this is dark. But notice the light gives you, the light gives you very little diffraction. Okay, you're gonna get very little diffraction due to, or on the light. You know, why would that be? Well, if you think about this, this opening is probably like three feet wide, at least three feet, maybe even a little bit more. So the opening is fairly large. The light that you would be diffracting is only, well, somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. How much is a nanometer? It's one one billionth of a meter. So the smallest little marks on a meter stick, if I, I got a small ruler here, these little marks that are right here, the, the smallest ones that aren't even numbered, they're one one thousandth of a meter, one millimeter. So these guys would be another roughly 400 million times smaller. There's 400 million of those little tiny waves in between each of the smallest marks on this ruler. They're tiny, they're very small. So if you think about what you have in this situation, your wavelength that you're trying to diffract, all right, is much, 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 much smaller than the opening. Does that make sense? Much, much smaller than the opening itself, okay? So you're not gonna get much diffraction of light. You're not gonna see light like really peeling off and, and curving around this opening. So that's why when you, when you walk by a door that's dark, you're gonna go from dark to light and then right back to dark very, very quickly. On the other hand, if I'm looking at sound, sound has the ability, if I'm talking, if I'm in my classroom at school and I'm talking, people in the next room can hear me through an open door because that sound diffracts. It's able to move and curve as it goes through this door. Now, what would you say about the wavelength, okay? The wavelength of a sound wave? Well, I will tell you that males will typically talk somewhere between eh, 100 hertz and 200 hertz. A 200 hertz sound has a length that's right about five feet. So if you think about that, if I'm talking at about that pitch, that sound is really close in wavelength to the opening that's here, which means if we look back at our, at our waves here, if I have a wavelength that's very close to being the same as the opening, I'm gonna get lots of diffraction. So it's no big surprise that if you're in the next room, you can hear me even though I'm not in sight of you. 
even if you can't see me, you'll be able to hear me because that sound will diffract into that next room. It will move around those corners, okay? So that is a property of waves. And like I said, sound waves are gonna exhibit this a whole lot more because of the fact their wavelength tends to be much closer to the size of the door. So I would say here, lots of diffraction. So sound diffract. Sound's going to give you a lot of diffraction, but light will give you very little diffraction because of the differences in their wavelengths. All right. Um, okay, one more thing I want to talk about today, and then we'll be done. And that is back to this drawing. This can also play out if you happen to have a house that's close to a hill. Now, not many of us do. But there are places in the world that you may live in at some point, and you wonder why I can get certain radio stations, but my cell phone reception is crummy. Well, this could well have to do with diffraction. So let's say that I have a tower where I'm broadcasting AM. So a radio station has its a broadcasting tower, and we're broadcasting an AM, which this is going to be hundreds of meters is what your wavelength is going to be, OK? AM radio is going to have wavelengths measured in hundreds of meters. And you also have an FM station that's there, which is going to be more like, yeah, like two or three meters, OK? And then you also, because they like using these towers that are already there, all these cell phone companies come and they put their, their antennas on top of these to get better cell reception. Well, your issue with your cell reception, your wavelength for a cell is going to be uh, about 0.2 meters or 0.3 meters is about how big that one of these waves is. Well, what effect does this have on your ability to receive these signals on the other side of this hill. Well, if this hill, let's just say that this, this hill is 100 plus meters across, okay, the width of the hill is 100 meters. Well, that means the wavelength of the AM radio signal is going to be just about the same length as this hill is. And when, and what do we know about when the wavelength, these are all wavelengths, what do we know about what happens with diffraction when the wavelength approximately equals this thing that we have to get past? Well, if wavelength approximately equals the width, I'll just use a W for it here, you're gonna get lots of refraction or diffraction, excuse me. So this wave is going to, when it encounters this barrier, it's not just gonna continue going over the top. Okay, our AM, our AM signal is also going to diffract significantly. It's gonna bend as it goes around this and what does that mean about you receiving AM or radio waves, TV waves at your house? Well, it basically means that you're gonna be good. You're gonna receive an AM signal at your house because of the fact that that wavelength that the station broadcasts with is about equal to the width of this hill. Now, when we talk about FM, Okay, this two to three meter, these waves are going to be significantly smaller. Okay, and as they approach this hill, they are going to also continue on. I'll just kind of draw them like this. And this is just a small segment of the wave itself, but it's going to continue on because it is not the same size, it's a little bit smaller. So I'll just say that in this case, that our wavelength, draw it over here, 
wavelength of the FM wave is going to be smaller than the width. What did we know about that? If we go back over to the last page, when our, when our wavelength is smaller than our opening, that's what I'm saying is happening here, you get some diffraction, but not nearly as much. And so as it encounters this hill, you'll see a little bit of bending as it kind of goes around, but it is not going to be quite as significant as the AM one that had a, had a wavelength that was closer to what it was. And so you're going to see that the amount of diffraction you're going to get with this FM is not going to be quite as significant as it was with the AM. You're not going to get quite as much diffraction. And so I would say the FM signal, I'm just going to say it's marginal. All I mean by that is if you're really counting on listening to something on the radio and you want to live in this house, you're, you may have to do some things to increase your signal, put a signal booster in. Um, put an antenna up so that gets you a little bit better exposure to that signal, okay? Because it does not diffract as much as the AM did. You get a smaller amount of diffraction. Okay, and then lastly, I'll switch back over to red on this, your cell signal. Now, <coughs> if you look at this, this is roughly a tenth of the wavelength that these were. And so your cell signal you're gonna have signals that are quite close together, all right, as that signal tries to make its way over this hill, it has a wavelength that is much, much smaller than the width, which means you have even less diffraction. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep kind of keeping this going straight. And these should be even shorter than they look, you guys. I just don't feel like drawing that many lines. You're going to get very slight diffraction on the edges of these, but it's not really going to diffract a whole lot. This is also one of the reasons, you guys, especially in areas that are hillier, that um, you got to put up multiple antennas. You have to put up cell phone antennas. You got to put those up every few miles, especially in an area that has a lot of hills, because the hills will block those signals. Um, and in order for a house like this that's close to the hill, it's kind of in the shadow, if you will. And it's not really going to get much diffraction, which means you're not going to get much signal. So, what I would say is that your cell phone signal here so you're going to have a bad signal there okay it's just the nature of the wave that you're using those ones with really small wavelengths they can't get around large barriers easily um, they just don't diffract very much and so you're not gonna you're gonna have real spotty cell phone service if you're there now there's other reasons to have spotty cell phone service also um geography and topography, hills and valleys that you may have is just one of them. But um, you're gonna have to find a way to boost your cell phone strength. Um, or really what you gotta do is petition your cell phone, um, your cell phone company to get them to build more towers, okay? So anyways, you guys, that is diffraction, it's the bending. All right, it's the spreading out or the bending of a wave as it passes through an opening. Remember that the wave, the relationship between wavelength, wavelength and the size of the opening has to do with whether or not you're gonna get diffraction. If the wavelength is much, much smaller than the opening or the barrier that you're trying to pass, you're not gonna get much bending, not much diffraction. On the other hand, if your wavelength is about equal to that opening, you're gonna get a lot of diffraction. And if the wavelength is bigger than the opening, you're also gonna get a lot of diffraction, okay? So um, way, uh, diffraction can also occur in sound and in light. 
Um, it tends to work better on sound because sound has longer wavelengths, which means you're more likely to be in one of these cases where your wavelength is equal to your opening or even bigger than your opening, then you're gonna get a lot more diffraction. That means that visible light, you don't see a whole lot of diffraction typically because it's pretty small. Now I will tell you one example, I forgot to mention this. Actually, let me wrap this up. And then you also, this has applications for different sizes of wavelengths that you will see in different frequencies. Um, one example where light will diffract you guys, and you've done this before probably, <clears throat> Let me kind of point my desk lamp down so I throw some light on this. If you use a CD <clears throat> and you look at a CD, if you kind of tilt the CD, what you'll see <clears throat> is you see the entire rainbow here. Okay, I see red or transitioning to orange and then yellow. If I keep going, you'll see some green pop in there. Okay, and at the very edge, you can kind of see some blue even. So I'm seeing the entire portion of the visible spectrum. Now, why am I able to do that? Well, as CD-ROM basically works by putting tiny grooves in the surface of this disk. And those grooves happen to be about the same width that visible light is. So what you end up seeing is this is light that is being diffracted. The light's coming from the bulb that's up here. It's shining down onto this. And then because the different colors diffract differently based on their wavelength, <clears throat> it, it actually splits up all the colors in white light into your Roy G. Biv colors. There you can kind of see all of them, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, the indigo and violet are kind of hard to see usually, they're right on the end, okay? So this is what would be called a diffraction grading. And they basically just, it's a bunch of lines that are etched in this plastic and because the distance between them is right about the same as the distance um, of the wavelength of visible light, they will diffract light. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there, you guys. I hope you learned a little bit about, um, what were the heck, what were you talking about? Um, diffraction, diffraction, gee whiz. Um, and uh, don't forget to take the quiz on this. Have a great day, you guys. See you later.